Hello, my beautiful people on YouTube and Facebook. I also have my people here on Instagram with me tonight. I'm very excited to be here with you guys tonight. As you know, we're going to be studying our book, The Virtuous Woman of Today. I'm really excited about the topic today because today we're closing chapter two, which it talks about how to be a motivated woman. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Okay, my beautiful people, once again, thank you for being here with me tonight. If you guys can give me one second, uh, just go grab your Bibles, grab your book, your notes. In the meantime, I want to see if I can share this video with my ladies on my private group on Facebook. So give me one second so I can share this. And I think it's being shared. So once again, welcome. I'm so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Tonight we're going to be learning what to do when we are not motivated. So I wanted before we jump into that to remind you, the ladies that are watching me on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook to, to turn on your notifications. Make sure you have those notifications on so you always are reminded of when I'm going live and also make sure you like and share this video with other ladies so they're blessed with this message as well. And before we get started, guys, I wanted to let you know next week is Thanksgiving here in the United States. So we're not going to have class, we're not going to have prayer, and we're not going to have the workshop next week because it is Thanksgiving, so we're going to take a little break, but we will be back on the week of the 29th, and I'm excited because on that week, we're going to be learning how to be a woman who can do it all. So uh, we're going to discover what power is in us to help us conquer everything that God asks us to do. Amen. So if you guys are excited about this, type in an amen. And so I can see that you guys are connecting as well. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this beautiful night that you have allowed us, Father, to be here in your presence, to learn more about your word, to learn more about how to become those virtuous women that you have created us to be. Thank you, Father, for the tools you're giving us. Thank you for the practical steps to be able to accomplish everything you are calling us to be. We ask you to please, you guide this teaching tonight, that is your Holy Spirit who is guiding us and giving us all the tools that we need, the steps to become those motivated women and be able to accomplish everything you are calling us to do. Thank you, Father, and we pray in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. I'm excited. Welcome once again, the ones that are watching live right now, uh, Bella, Jessica, I see you uh, on Instagram. I see uh, Guitar, Trina, Jasmine. I'm so excited to have you guys here um, and the ones that are going to be watching this video afterwards. Welcome as well. So you guys know for the past week we have been learning the second puzzle of the piece or, or the second piece of the puzzle that is how to be a motivated woman and that puzzle is very critical i have been telling you guys that this puzzle is the glue that helps to keep all the puzzle pieces together staying motivated is critical to be able to achieve everything that god is calling us to do and the first piece of that puzzle that we learn is how to be a woman of good habit and a daily good habits, right? So uh, with those two puzzle pieces, we're starting already to create that virtuous woman that God is calling us to be, amen? So I want to do a very brief summary of what we learned last week. We were talking about two kinds of motivation we need to have in our life. Number one is our spiritual motivation, and number two is our personal motivation. And the spiritual motivation, uh, we have a cheerleader there, that, that is the Holy Spirit. He's the one to keep us motivated, but in order to keep the Holy Spirit motivated, we need to make sure we're aligned to God's word, aligned to God's um, desires for our life, and make sure we are seeking God every day so we learn what he has to tell us and, and, and memorize those Bible verses that help us stay encouraged and know God's promises for our life, right? And we also talk about the personal motivation, and we said that we are responsible to keep 
that personal motivation going, that we are our best cheerleaders. And for that, we create realistic goals, we, are, we record our progress, and we, show, we, we make sure we reward ourselves, right, in the process. We keep our body strong, and we have been learning diff different steps to help us stay motivated to become that virtuous woman that God is calling us to do and to become. And I also spoke to you guys about a reward for staying motivated. I was telling you guys that um, when you are motivated, when you are actually obeying God, you're showing to God how much you love him. You're showing and proving to God that you want to do his will. And that is very critical in your relationship with the Lord. And because you do that, God has a promise for your life. When you're obedient, when you love him. And I read to you guys 1 Corinthians 2, 9, where it says, however, as it is written, what not eye has seen, what not ear has heard, and what not human mind has conceived are the things God has prepared for those who love them. And that is you who are watching right now. God loves you. And the more you obey the Lord, the more you're able to experience things that no eye has seen, not ear has heard, and not human mind has conceived. How many of you say amen with me tonight? How many of you agree to that? And I think they're telling me that I'm offline for some reason, so let me try to reconnect. Um, am I live? Can you guys let me know? Give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me on YouTube and, and Facebook. I think I'm still live, right? Okay, I know on Instagram I'm still live, so I'm gonna keep going then. And if you guys agree with me, once again, type in amen with that God's promise that he's giving us to um, Jesse saying, I can hear you. Thank you, Jesse. Okay, perfect. So let's continue. And yes, the Lord is telling us here that when we obey him, we're going to be able to see and, and hear and experience things because his glory, his power is with us. Amen. Now, I want you guys to talk about tonight a very, um, and tonight, once again, we're closing chapter two. Tonight is the last teaching about motivation and next, not next week, but the following week, we're going to be learning a new topic, which I'm excited about. And I'm going to talk a little bit more later, but tonight I wanted to close by ans answering a question that I'm getting a lot from you ladies. And is what do we do when we're not motivated? What is it that we do for that? I want you guys to go to first Samuel 15, 22. So get your Bibles out. Let's read what 1 Samuel 15, 22 tells us, amen. So I'm going to give you a moment to get there because once again, I like you guys reading with me the word. 1 Samuel 15, 22 says, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? The obey is better than sacrifice and to pay attention is better than fat of rams what is god telling us here obedience is the most important thing and is the best thing that you can do to the lord he absolutely loves obedience and he loves when we pay attention to his word we pay attention to what he's asking us to do and when we obey and why am i telling you this guys why are we reading this verse right now when we're trying to answer the question what do we do when we're not motivated what do we do we obey god it's that simple. I have been telling you guys, and, and I love mentioning this, that when there is no motivation, there is discipline. And a lot of people say, yes, but how do I apply that discipline? And the best way that I can describe to you guys on how I am disciplined with everything that God calls me to do is to be obedient to him, to do it for him. The moment you think about, I'm not going to do this for a human. I'm not even going to do this for myself. I'm going to do it for the Lord. There is something in your body that aligns with you to help you achieve what God is calling you to do. And there is something that helps you. The Holy Spirit wants to help you obey the Lord. So that's why when we are not motivated, what do we do? We obey the Lord. We are disciplined and we obey the Lord. Amen. How many of you can say amen with me tonight? Just type in in the comments, 
Amen if you agree that obedience, first of all, we understand what First Samuel is telling us here, that obedience is the best thing you can give to the Lord, first and second, that when there is no motivation, there is discipline. And what is discipline? Is obeying God, setting up your mind to obey God. Now, one of the things that I love doing, guys, when I'm not motivated, is to think about the harvest I am going to receive once I complete doing the task that I'm doing, once I'm being obedient. Knowing the reward that is coming my way motivates me enough to keep pushing, to keep pressing, to keep obeying, because I know that it's a harvest. I know God's promise, we just read it, things that we haven't seen, that we haven't heard, that our mind cannot comprehend are the things that are coming my way if I am obedient to God, if I love Him with my obedience, amen? Now, God is a God of order, guys. He's a God of order and principles. So to be able to reap, you have to sow. And to be able to sow, you have to obey God. There is no other way around. That's the, that's the order of things, the, the way we need to do things. And I want to tell you guys a story that I heard. I don't remember where I heard it from, but I love it so much and it inspired me so much that I want to share it with you guys tonight. It's not in the Bible, but it's a story that it really symbolizes a lot what I'm talking about. And this story is about some sowers and that we're giving some seeds and to sow. So these sowers have received some seeds to sow and the sowers began to pray and ask God to bless those seeds and ask God to bear good fruit. And, and they were praying that those seeds would bear fruit. And after a while and a lot of praying, the sowers went to collect the fruit, but they, to their surprise, there was no fruit. So after they pray for over those seeds, after they were declaring that they were going to see good fruit, they didn't see anything. When they were, after the time and then when they were to collect those fruits, there was no fruit. And the source asked the Lord, what happened? What did we do wrong? We were praying, we were believing for good fruit. What happened? And you know what the Lord said? He said, you never sow those seeds that were given to you. You kept them there in the same box that were given to you. You never sowed them. So the Lord says, said, as you didn't do the natural part, I wasn't able to do the supernatural part. And guys, that ministered to my heart so much. If we want to see God moving in our life, if we want to see the harvest of all the efforts that we are praying for, we need to do our natural part. We need to sow those seeds. We need to make sure we're doing our part so God can bless those seeds. God can bless that effort. God can bless our obedience. It is necessary to obey God to be able to see the results in our life and what it that is really what keep us motivated guys the more we're obeying God the more we're seeing God's hand moving in our life and the more we're going to be able to see results and the best motivation that we can have is visualizing those those fruits that we're going to give by being obedient so for example if you are exercising if you want to lose a couple of pounds or if you want to see your house organized whatever whether it's something big or some, something small that you need motivation or you want a revelation from god right whatever it is you're gonna need to do your part you're gonna need to spend time with the lord you're gonna need to clear out your desk you're gonna need to do the exercise and what keeps you motivated is knowing that by you doing this you're gonna get the results and imagining those results. So see yourself losing those pounds, see yourself getting that revelation from God, see yourself clearing out your home, declaring your home, having it all nice and clean, right? All those kind of things, all that, that you're able to see that fruit before you even sow is what's gonna motivate you to sow the seed in the first place. But remember that if you don't do your part, you won't be able to allow God to do His supernatural part in your life amen how many of you type in amen in the comments so i can see that you guys are hearing that you guys are agreeing that we are getting this message of obedience because it is so important now 
when there is no motivation, I have told you a million times, there is discipline. And you do it out of obedience to God. That's what discipline is. It's just being obedient to God, period. You know he has asked you to do something. You know you need to work. Like right now, right? We, we want to become those virtuous women. And God is giving us the steps. He's teaching us how to be encouraged, how to be motivated, how to be a woman of good habits. So he's giving us those practical steps. Now it's up to us to actually sow those seeds. And if we're not motivated to sow those seeds, we're going to do it out of obedience to God. And that right there, my love, is discipline. That is going to teach you to be disciplined. God promotes obedience. I want you guys to type in wherever you are. Just type in God promotes obedience. It is important that we remember this piece because when we know that we're going to be promoted, that's going to motivate us even more. We need to obey God just because we love him, right? But just to push us, to motivate us even more, just remembering that God promotes obedience, it is fundamental to stay motivated. So go ahead, type in God promotes obedience. So you, it helps you remember this important thing. And every time you're obedient to God, to his call, to what he's asking you to do, he shows you a new step you need to take. I told you guys that God is a God of order. He's a God of principles. He will never give you a step 10 if you haven't even completed step one. Step one. So that's why it is important, guys, that you take one step at a time. Remember when I told you that to become this virtuous woman that we wanted to do, we were going to work one piece at a time, one step at a time. And yes, we're going to be including other pieces, other steps, but we're going to focus on the one that the Holy Spirit is inclining us to do the most because we are different and we are all in different situations in our life right now. But at the same time, we can all work in obedience. That's something that we all have in common and is to work in obedience with God. Amen. So there is a time of grace, guys. And I wanted to explain this to you because the Lord, he revealed this to me while I was going through this process of staying motivated, of, of being disciplined. And there was this piece that God ministered to me. And he said, there is this, this time, time of grace that he gives us. When we're being obedient, guys, when God says, do this, and you actually take action and start doing it, the Holy Spirit helps you achieve whatever it is that God is calling you to do. And the Lord himself opens up and aligns hearts and opens all the doors that needs to be opened. So what you're doing, your job is actually easier. And he helps you during that time because you're being obedient. That's why I have been telling you guys that when you guys are inspired, when you guys feel that, that prompting from the Holy Spirit to do something, take immediate action because it's right there where the Holy Spirit, God is going to help you to achieve what he's calling you to do. And then to stay motivated, you just keep repeating yourself that your obedience is going, God is going to promote your obedience. Amen. So when we understand that time of grace, that's going to keep us even more motivated to be obedient and to do what God is calling us to do because we know we're not doing it alone. We know God is helping us. He's guiding us. He's encouraging us because we are being obedient. Now, it is worth to stay motivated and don't give up. And what the Lord in what the Lord is asking you to do. Once again, always remember that story that I told you about the sowers and the seeds. It is impossible, no matter how much you're praying, how hard you're praying for God to do something in your life, it is impossible for God to bless something that you're not being obedient on, guys. So, and I'm speaking to myself as well. So let's analyze our life. Let's think about what seeds we have that we have not planted yet, that we have not taken action on it yet. And we're still believing and hoping that God will do something, but we haven't done our natural part yet. So remember that for him to be able to do his supernatural part in your life is important that you actually are doing your natural part, that you're doing, you're being obedient and you're taking action. Now, to keep your focus on God and 
to be able to just do what God is asking you to do, it is necessary, guys, to just stay focused, to, to remember what God told you, period, and just obey what he told you. Don't get distracted with other things. So in this case, for example, with the sowers, the story that I told you guys, they were distracted thinking and waiting for God to do just the supernatural part. They were distracted with God will bless the seeds and believing that God will do it. And he did, but those seeds were never planted. So, so don't get distracted thinking God is going to do your job because he's not going to do your job. He cannot sow those seeds for you. You need to do it. So that's why guys, obedience is so critical. And if, if you start thinking about the steps that I was giving you, if you're obedient, the more obedient that you are with the Lord, the more he's going to support you, the more disciplined you're going to become, and the more motivated you're going to stay, you're going to maintain. So what do you do when you're not motivated? You're obedient. You're obedient to God. You ask him, what is it that you need me to do, Lord? And you do what he's asking you to do. Now, if God is asking you to change your diet, start a business, or clean your desk, or spend more time with him, or start a teaching, or whatever it is that God is calling you to do, remember that those are seeds that God is giving you and that you need to start planting. Amen. And the more obedient you are, the more you're going to start seeing harvest in your life. How many of you type in amen and you believe it with me tonight? Now, staying motivated to finish what God is asking you to do is something that when you once again think that you're doing it for God, that you're doing it for him, it becomes so much easier. When you think, ah, I'm going to lose diet, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to organize my desk because I have to. It's very unmotivated to think it that way. But if you think about, I'm going to do it for the Lord because I know there is something bigger than just cleaning my desk or losing weight. I know my health is going to be improved. I know I'm going to be able to come up with better ideas for my business or for my school or for whatever it is. When I organize my desk, whatever it is that God is calling you to do, guys, is always for a bigger reason. So when you stay focused once again and you stay you press on and you sow those seeds and you're consistent then you're going to start seeing those results in your life now value and obey whatever action god is asking you to take no matter how big or how small some sometimes we think that you know because god is not asking me to do this big thing that means it's not worth to do if, if it is, once again, God starts with the smallest steps with us. And the word of God says that if we are loyal in the little, he will be able to put us in the big things. He will be able to trust us with bigger things. So whatever it is that God is asking you to do, whatever seed he's giving you, make sure you're planting it. No matter how big or how small it is, whether it makes sense to you or not, Start planting it because he starts with something little to train us to be able to manage big things. Amen. Now, being motivated in everything you do is something that if you participate or practice every day, you will be able to make it a lifestyle in your life. So once again, being motivated, obeying God, being disciplined, if that is something you practice every single day, it will become your lifestyle. And I'm telling you by experience, guys, because that's exactly what's happening to me. I was a woman who did not like exercising. I just didn't. And the Lord, through my doctor, told me it is fundamental that you start exercising because you need to build muscle. You need to strengthen your heart. I used to suffer because I was overweight before. I used to suffer of high cholesterol and my heart was starting to fail. And my doctor said, you're very young to have a heart attack. Back then I was like 23 when that happened. And she said, you need to exercise. And I just did not like exercising, but I had, I knew that was a seed God was giving me. And I knew I had to plant it and I knew I had to work on it. And today I'm, I'm, 
rejoicing of the harvest of exercising because now I love doing it. It became a lifestyle in my life. If I don't exercise one day, I feel lost. I feel tired. I just don't feel myself. But I went from not liking to do something to love doing something. From being a bad habit in my life to becoming a very good habit that became a lifestyle in my life. So do I get motivated every single day to work out? No, but I do it out of obedience to God, to honor my body. And when I start doing it, the Holy Spirit immediately helped me because I'm being obedient. Pay attention guys, because I'm being obedient the Holy Spirit helps me and the Lord helps me to push through and get it done. Next thing I know, I am so happy that I actually exercised and that I was able to plant the seed and I'm continue planting good seeds for my health. So really, really meditate on this guys, really meditate in the fact that when you guys are not motivated, there are those two things, obedience and discipline. And those two things are going to help you push through. Now in the past, a uh, week we have been or two weeks we have been learning different steps on how to stay motivated to achieve everything God is calling us to do and tonight I want to very quickly go through them and give you one last one the last step last step number six that will help you stay motivated but I want to and I like repeating and I like um, refreshing your memory because the more we hear it, the more we memorize it. Amen. So the step number one to stay motivated was to keep your spirit well fed. And what that meant was memorizing, memorizing verses from the Bible um, that fill you up with peace, with motivation, with joy, with faith, right? Those, those Bible verses will keep you motivated in the moment of need. We also talk about a step number two, which it was seek help. We were um, talking about the importance of having a prayer partner. And we read Matthew 18, 19, where he tells us that when two comes in agreement in prayer, God listens to a prayer. So it is important to have that prayer partner, that person that can help you in those moments that you're not motivated, that you feel weak, that the enemy is attacking, that you have somebody that you can pray with. Step number three, we were talking about keeping your dreams in sight. We uh, talk about visualizing all God's promises for our life. And it's exactly what we were talking today, right? Uh, talking about those seeds and what harvest that seed is going to bring and visualizing the harvest. And that's going to motivate you to plant those seeds. Amen. Now, step number four was to keep your body strong. And we talk about the importance of keeping your body strong so your mind can be strong. So the enemy doesn't attack you. Because the stronger you are physically and mentally, the more motivated you're going to be to do anything that God is calling you to do. And step number five, we learned it last week, was to look for inspiration and motivation in others. I was reminding you guys that God has assigned not just the Holy Spirit to be our mentor and guide us in the word and, and on Jesus' steps, but also he has assigned people that motivate us, that encourage us, that have gone through the process that we are going through and can guide us and, and probably teach us how they stood motivated um, and how they were able to get what you want to get at. Amen. Now, to conclude chapter two and to conclude the lessons for tonight um, and how to stay motivated, this is a step number six. You guys can find it in the book anyway. Tomorrow with Angelica, you guys are going to be activating this step as well. And is, this step is to imagine how you will feel in a year if you manage to achieve your dreams, if you actually stay motivated. So that step is going to help you stay motivated. It's exactly what I was telling you before. Imagine where the harvest is going to be. What are those fruits of your efforts? So when you guys think about those changes that, that are going to happen in your life, you are not going to want to give it up. You guys are gonna, going to want to sow those seeds, to pray over those seeds, to make sure you guys are doing your natural part so God can do the supernatural in your life. And you guys are going to stay motivated and pe pressing through um, and pushing through everything 
uh, making sure resistance, no matter what comes your way, you guys are going to be able to defeat it because you guys are putting your sight on Jesus, on the harvest, on what God is promising to give you if you're obedient, if you're consistent, if you do your part so he can do his supernatural part. Now think about the fruit that you will bear if you sow the seeds that God has given to you. Don't be like the sowers. Take action, do your natural part, and let God do his supernatural part. Amen. I wanted to read that part to you so you guys remember that. And I pray, guys, that these steps that I have been giving you through the week and and the workshops that you guys are doing with Angelica are keeping you motivated. And remember, this is not something that is going to happen overnight, just like any other seed. When you plant something, it takes some time to grow, to see fruit. So be patient with yourself. Be patient with the process. Remember that God's timing is perfect for you. And remember that as long as you're doing your part, as long as you're being obedient, God will be able to do his supernatural part in your life and you guys will be able to enjoy the beautiful harvest that is coming for you. Amen. Now, how many of you are ready to activate this puzzle piece and is to say, stay motivated? If that is you, I want you to type in, I'm a motivated woman. Let's declare it tonight. Just type in, I'm a motivated woman. Let's believe it together. While you guys are typing in, I want to remind you next week, we're not going to have prayer. We're not going to have class. We're not going to have the workshop. It's Thanksgiving here in the U.S. And we're going to just be with family, friends. You guys will be with family and friends as well. So we will honor that. And then we will be back on the week of the 29th. And we are going to be a study studying and learning, which I'm very excited about, how to become a woman who can do it all. How many of you want to become that woman who can do it all? That's another puzzle piece that God is giving us to become the virtuous woman, is how when God calls us to do something that is impossible to us, right? How can we make it possible? How can we do everything? Be an excellent mother, an excellent daughter, an excellent worker, an excellent whatever God is calling you to do. How can we do it? So that's what we're going to learn on the 29th. I'm very excited about that. Don't forget tomorrow the workshop with Angelica is at 8 p.m. If you guys need the link, send me a DM. I'll send you the link so you guys can be there and you guys can activate that piece that we learned tonight. And make sure you share this teaching with somebody else, guys. Give it a like share it let's let's spread this blessing with another woman who probably want to become the virtuous woman so let's make sure we share this blessing with them as well amen so let's pray dear heavenly father we thank you so much for tonight thank you for this beautiful word you have given us father thank you for reminding us lord that you have given us seeds and it's necessary for us to sow those seeds to do our our natural part father so you can do the supernatural in our life we ask you to Please continue encouraging us. Continue helping us stay motivated, Father. Remind us of these practical steps you have given us to stay motivated, Lord. And help us, Father, become everything you're calling us to be. And we want to be those virtuous women, Father. So help us in the process and and help us stay motivated. I pray for every single lady who is listening to this teaching right now, Father, whether it's live or afterwards, if they're, they're listening listening to it later. Father, I ask you that you bless them, that you help them, that you encourage them, and that you help them activate these puzzle pieces in their life. In the name of Jesus, we pray and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Guys, remember that all the classes are always recorded. If you're watching me through YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, all the classes are always recorded. So make sure you go find it. And um, and make sure we guys stay connected. For everybody who celebrates Thanksgiving, have an amazing Thanksgiving. I love you guys. I'll see you on the week of the 29th. And that being all, have a blessed night, guys. And make sure you sow those seeds. Amen. Bye, guys.